Good afternoon, I'm Steph. I'm going to do an orientation video on the Laredo fifth wheel. Overall, it's basically a general uh, video on most all fifth wheels that we carry. We're going to simulate it from removing it from the vehicle and then we're going to go on the outside to the inside. So your vehicle is hooked up, you're going to power on by hitting the power button. Okay, you're going to lift the front up by pushing the front button. Okay, disengage your vehicle, you're going to pull off. Okay, with everything closed, ready to go, you're going to push auto leveling. Okay, it'll do its own thing. We're going to let that do it and play it out so you know how it goes. During this process, what it's doing is it's leveling it side to side best it can. Once it gets to that point, it's going to lift it up to get to almost level. And then after that, it's going to drop the rear jacks down on this unit and of course lift the unit up just a tad bit. Then after it does that, it's going to level it side to side better. And then of course it will go into success on the screen and you know it's been leveled side to side front to rear. It's a timely process, so just bear with us. And there you have it. It is successfully level front to rear. And of course, you can power it off if you choose to. If not, it will automatically time out. This unit comes with a lock, so you can lock it so nobody messes with it as you're camping. All right, so we're gonna start in the front area, work our way around back to this point, then we'll skip into going inside the vehicle, or the coach. Inside the front compartment, you have lots of storage. I like to call this where the wood goes, okay? It's metal framed, it's reinforced, that way you can throw wood in there and it's easy cleanup. And of course you do have access to your front jacks if anything happened for maintenance purposes for the service department. Okay. It does latch with a latch here. And of course it just goes down and locks into place and you can lock it as well. On the front, you have your cane pin, and of course, you do have some lights, and that switch is located on the front, right here where it says docking lights, okay? All right, so you got something to at least find your way back to your own camper after you've been drinking a few with the uh, local people. You do have solar panel charge hookup, okay? What this is, is it's wired to the battery, you buy a solar panel with a plug, you plug it in here, it will charge the battery up. The sun, of course. Inside the front compartment on this side, you have where your bar battery would go inside the box. And if you get the convenience pack, you get one battery. Of course, both propane tanks will be filled. You get 50 to 30 adapter, 31, 15 adapter, and of course, a drinking hose and a sewer dump hose. Inside this cabinet on the far side here, you do have a battery disconnect. Okay, anytime you're not plugged in or towing, kill the battery disconnect. That way it does not kill the battery. If you are plugged in and towing, make sure you leave it on so it charges the battery as you're plugged in and or towing. The front compartment, box for your television if you choose to store it in the winter, does have a light and of course the crank is to manually crank the jacks if something happened or the rooms if something happened you were stranded. Okay, it does have a push button light here. And of course it does have cable, satellite, and 110 if you choose to put a TV in this area or even on a picnic table. Now the nice thing about this, it has magnets that hold the door open and of course slam latches so you can slam it shut, lock it, and of course travel down the road. You do have two speakers tied to the radio inside. 
Okay, and you do have a vent here. This is the exhaust for your uh, furnace. Don't block that with anything. For simple fact, do you want to burn anything down or catch anything on fire? They do make screens for these as well as the water heater to keep the bugs out, mice and all the other critters. A ventilation vent over the stove area. So when you're cooking, you can ventilate the air out. You do have a 110 outlet here. Anytime you're plugged into shore power, you have power out here as well. We'll go over the wheels and tires momentarily. And of course, we'll go over the stairs before we go inside. On the rear, you do have a ladder, okay, which is great for accessible to the roof. You want to get on the roof minimum of three times a year. Twice a year, you're going to check your seals. Front, rear, around the bathroom, vent, things like that. You have lap sealing. Lamp sealing is a rubber-based material that adheres the rubber membrane roof. Over a period of time, it could crack or bubble. Fill over the cracks, pop the bubbles, and then fill over those as well. That's twice a year. Once a year, you're going to treat the roof and the slide room roofs with UV blocker and conditioner. But this is a moisturizer to keep the roof rubberized. If you choose not to do this, over a period of time, it could shrink, crack, and of course, cause water damage. We want to prevent that by doing that once a year. On the rear of this coach, it comes pre-prepped for a backup camera. What that means is it's already pre-wired. They're going to remove that plate, put a camera in there, in your vehicle, you get a display unit, turn the running lights on on the camper, a Bluetooth to the monitor, and you get an observation station, security camera, and automatically turns the night vision if you're going to travel at night and be able to switch lanes. On the lower half, you do have a hitch. By all means, this is a towable. It has a four-way flat, and it has where you can hook chains up to. If it did not, you would not be able to tow with this, but this model you can because it is a fifth wheel. No more than it is placed underneath. I will check that for you. Right here, it says 300 pound tongue weight. All right, this unit is considered a 50 amp. Okay, it has a 50 amp cord. This is the power cord, okay? If you get the convenience, you will get the dog bone, which is a 50 to 30, and of course, 30 to 115 adapter. Anytime you're plugged into shore power, you can have a power outage. When the power comes back on, there's a spike in electricity, you can blow boards such as your refrigerator and air conditioner, and those boards on this unit particularly are about $933 and some change plus a service call. To prevent all that, you wanna make sure you get a surge protector to prevent that from happening. Around to the off-door side in the rear, you have a vent. No worries for you, it's just ventilation tube. No, no worries at all. Now, you have your wheels and tires. Your wheels and tires, they want to maintain the air pressure. If you forget what the air pressure is, you can always find it at the front of the unit. And it is 80 PSI, as you can see right here. Now, you need to torque the rims down. First couple of trips, new axles, new rims. They will loosen up just like a car. We recommend adding grease to it, but if you don't choose to, repack the brains every 6,000 miles or two years. There are grease buddies on them if you remove the wheel and of course remove the dust cap. This is the back of your refrigerator. It sucks air in this way and out the top. So don't block this with any bushes. You wanna make sure it runs properly. They do make screens for those as well to keep the bugs out of there. Underneath the unit, you have your dump station. Okay, remove the cap, hook up the dump hose, and you want to know where the, the hose is at. You can store it right here in this tube right here. How convenient, right close to the dump station. All right, once you're hooked up to full hookup or to the dump station, you're going to re, re, uh, pull your valves. You're going to start with the black. Once that's empty, shut it, open your gray tanks, let that flush all the debris out of the hose, close the valves, unhook the hose, and of course, stow the hose right back in that tube. All right, your water heater. It doesn't come with a cover. Unfortunately, it does. It's just hiding. You do have, on this model, an anode rod. Anode rod goes in here, and you tighten it up. Okay, the socket size is an inch and one sixteenth. Once you're tightened up and you're ready to run water, hook up water, relieve the pressure by making sure you have water flowing out of here. Once you do, you have electric button. Right behind here, let me remove this out of the way. You have an electrical button, okay? You want to turn that on. You might have one inside, you might not. If you do, this is a safety switch. You have to have both switches on to run the electric portion. 
Now, this is gas as well, so if you have the electric on, if you run the gas as well as you're in the shower, it maintains faster than six gallons, just turn into eight and a half to 10 gallons. Once you're out of the shower, turn the gas off because you don't pay for electricity, you pay for the gas. It does come with a cover, so I will give that back to you. Maybe. Inside your motor, uh, manifold area, all trailers are not alike, but about 68% of them are. This is for a hose, which is this. They call it a sleaky hose. We consider this an outside shower, but we don't want to shower outside. They frown upon that, so use it for everything else. You have cable and satellite. The light is on for the antenna, so you know you have power. Hook up cable or satellite, and you're glamping and not camping, but you do have that option. It will feed throughout the trailer. Up here in the far right corner, you have a black tank flush. A black tank flush is a sprinkler system and a black tank to flush all the debris out of the tank when you're done camping or however often you choose to use it, okay? You have the winterized bypass valve, tank fill, and winterize. okay? It just depends on what you're doing, how you're gonna run it. Right now, if you're going to have hot water, make sure it's down and off, that way water goes into the hot water here so you have hot water. Now, if you're going to fill the fresh water tank, you want this valve down. Hook up the guard nose to this, and of course, turn it on and you're filling your fresh water tank. If you're not gonna fill the fresh water tank, leave it on normal flow and turn the faucet on, and of course, you have water throughout the trailer. During winterization, you're gonna open up your uh, hot water heater, remove your plug, and of course, you're gonna do the bypass, okay? So no water or antifreeze can no longer go in there for the off season. You're gonna turn this on to winterize, okay? What that does is change the valve from the fresh water tank to this port. Hook a garden hose up to that or a hose that may come with the unit. Put it again in the antifreeze, turn the water pump out, and it'll suck out of that bottle throughout the unit to winterize, and that's all you have to do. If you're on regular season, camping season, you wanna make sure those valves are down and decide if you're running tank or normal. You're gonna hook a garden hose up to here and enjoy camping. Now. If you're going to drain your fresh water tank, if you have water in it, somewhere below the coach, you have a drain, which is probably in the rear of the coach. So follow me, cameraman. We're gonna go back towards the back here. As you can see, right here is your fresh water drain. Okay, the valve is open. We say to leave it open if you have no water in there. That way, if it draws moisture, it doesn't cause mold and mildew. So let it drain as much as possible. Your spare tire is located underneath the coach as well. And I believe the last but not least is the basement and the propane tanks. Okay, the other side of the compartments here, it does come with light as well. So you have access on both sides. I'm gonna turn these lights off and shut the hatch. Next to that is your propane tanks, okay? Nice thing about this unit, if you have any questions about the leveling system, is right inside the door for you for reference. If you get the convenience pack, both tanks will be filled and ready to go camping. This is the regulator valve, okay? It is pointing towards this tank. Use this tank. Once it's empty, shut the valve off. Switch it around, and of course, you're going to go off the other tank. You can see there's a little red thing right there. That means there's no propane on the system. All right, once you have propane, turn it on, that will go clear. When it goes red again, you know you're out of propane. All right. That excludes the outside of the unit. We're gonna pause the video and we're gonna go to the door side and continue. All right, we are back. Congratulations on the outside. You've learned as much as possible on the outside of the unit. As you can see, we're ready to go inside. We have the lend a hand to act as a second door device to hold it open closed as you travel. Pick up the handle, pivot it out of your way, that way you can get inside the coach. Unlock it. Two very important things to learn about these stairs, okay? They are called solid step. They are very great if you know how to function them properly. 
One, make sure the door is all the way open before bringing them down. This guy will ding it up or tear it up, however you want to call it. Pull the, the arm out of the way and of course bring them down. The second most important thing is these two right here are as flush as possible, okay? But the simple fact is when you go to shut your door and it's not, it could crease up the bottom rail and of course cause air leaks and maybe water damage. If you have to adjust the legs for any reason, you have pins on both sides. Go ahead and pull the pins out and adjust the legs accordingly to uneven ground. All right, we're going to proceed inside and we're going to go ahead and turn everything on as we go along, okay? Inside the door to your left, you'll see down at the bottom you have a fire extinguisher. Okay, that's for safety. The only reason why they put it by the door is to extinguish your shorts as you run out because insurance will cover everything else. On the right hand side you have your main panel, okay? Let's turn some lights on. Okay, you got the ceiling, you have your porch light, which is the awning lights. Above that you have gas and electric. So you have two electric buttons, so you must have both on electric and or gas, okay? Water pump is located to the right of that. And of course you have the slide rooms and your awning, okay? I'm gonna have the cameraman come in for a moment so we can run the awning out so he don't get wet. It has been raining. You're gonna hit the extend button, okay? And you're gonna hold it to a certain point. And he's gonna step back outside and he's gonna show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna get a little bit louder. As you run it out, you can see in the far left corner, there will be a sticker. That's as far as you want to run it out. Or if the little balance falls down, that's as far as you'd like to go. All right, a few things on the awning. Each side has this little knob on this type of awning. It's always loose for the simple fact is this arm will slide in, tighten it down, and you have rain runoff, or tilt, as they call it. You can do both, front and rear, or either or. If you do both, what it's going to do is tilt the top of the awning downward, so when the sun goes to go down in the evening, it gives you a little bit more shade on this side of the coach. Just remember to loosen up the nut on either side or both, however you are, before rolling it in so it goes to full extension so the awning rolls up evenly, okay? Cameraman's gonna go back inside and I'll go over the rest of the man uh, monitoring panel for you. Okay, so we know how the awning works. Slide rooms, we'll pick this one. Nope, we'll pick this one since this is the main room. This is a cable system, cable driven system. Okay, as you can see, it's working in sequence with each other. One's pulling the co uh, cable, the other one's pushing. So it's literally pulling the slide room out. Nice thing about this is it goes out evenly because that's how it's set up and it's a great, great cable system. All right, as you see it stop, take your finger off the button. Now we're gonna do the front front room, but you wanna make sure, safety reasons, that the door is latched and locked so you don't tear the door off the hinges by using the slide room. Okay, we have tested that. And now we'll go ahead and open up the wardrobe slide. Okay, it has stopped. Now, that's it for this portion of it. Up here is where you're gonna test your tanks and your battery level. Okay, fresh is empty, battery is full, black, black two does not count, gray one and gray two do. Black two is just a general panel, so it does not add. Now, you're asking, do we have a battery on board? Absolutely not. The only way you're gonna test the battery voltage or the meter is make sure you're unplugged from a power source because it's trying to charge the battery as you're plugged in. All right, to the rear of the coach. You do have storage on both sides of the sofa bed, okay? You do have storage throughout the upper half of it as well. You do have push button lights for any additional lights you need for reading or whatnot. You have windows throughout the rear, and of course, any window in this coach that has a red handle is a fire exit window, okay? Super easy to operate. Pull on this, pops the screen out, and of course, this will push out and you can jump out, twist the ankle or whatever. Just be safe. All right. On this coach, 
you have pull down blinds, okay? Pull them down and they will stop where you are, okay? If you want them retracted, just tug on them and let go and they automatically rewind themselves. You do have one tent on both sides as well if you want to put a lamp, you know, maybe a coffee pot so you don't have to get up or anything like that. It's very easy. Now the bed, super easy. If you don't want anybody to spend the night, don't tell them you have a bed. But if you choose that you want them to spend the night, I'm going to demonstrate how it's done. You remove the rear cushions down here at the middle. You pick up and you pull up. You extend the legs outward and lay the bed down. Okay? Then you take the back and you go down with it. Now you have a bed for guests. Like I said, if you choose not to have guests, you don't have any extra room. Just easy enough to fold it back up. Fold the back up. Lift it up. Fold the legs inward. And let it fold right back down inside the couch. Then, of course, last but not least, you want the nice back support. Put the cushions back in place. And there you have it. Now, off to the slide room. Two important things to know about slide rooms. One, as you can tell, the carpet area is your slide room. Okay? Very important key. Once the room is inward, your room will come to about here. Okay? That means this is a floating floor. Do not walk on the carpeted area. Once it's in, it's unsafe. You could break down the boards and or the seals and cause water damage. Once the room is out, it's on its own access. It's free to go. No worries there. This does have push button lights in the center for them nice long evening poker games. Where are the poker chips and cards? You can store them right underneath the seats if you choose to. Comes with four place chairs and of course a strap to lock them into place for travel. And no extra leaf. So pretty much that is what you're having. So just make sure you don't get crazy with the chip and dip when you're playing poker. Okay, refrigerator. This is the Dometic 10.8 cubic inch refrigerator. Super nice and awesome. For one reason, you have separated freezer and refrigerator. Good news and bad news about that. The good news is it's gas and electric, okay? As you can see, it's on, on, and on auto. Auto means it's the default to 110. If we go and disconnect the power, automatically try to light on gas. If it does not light on gas, that light right there will turn on and it says check. It means you forgot to turn the propane on or you're out of propane. Now, unfortunately, the bad news of it is it does not come with ice maker or any free ice cream. So you're on your own there. But inside the refrigerator, you have a thermostat. Right here, located, you see up or down. It's this little white thing right here that you're going to adjust for temperature. Okay? All right. We're going to turn that off for now. Um, we're going to head up towards the front, work our way back. Do you have any questions? All right, we're going to continue on. All right, right here, we're going to show you how to operate the furnace, air conditioner, and the fan. We're going to leave the fan on auto. It means it's automatically going to turn on and turn off to your designated temperature. Okay? We're going to hit air. It might get a little loud in here. All right, not too bad. All right, now, if you want to cool the area off quicker, they call dumps. Okay, you can open these up. And of course, it'll dump all the air downward in this area. That way, if you're getting late somewhere, you want to cool this area off to uh, sit down for a while, force all the air here. If not, shut these two slides. And of course, it force feeds it throughout the coach, throughout the ceiling. All right. Same with the furnace. Basically, you just want it on heat. All right, heat is ran through the floor or the black vents along the kitchen area, as you can see. And like I said, in the floor area. Now, you have to make sure one shuts all the way down before you start the next one for the simple fact is you don't want them both running at the same time. So you want to make sure it powers all the way off before you go to the next one. Okay, fair enough. 
All right, we're gonna work our way up here. We got a light switch and the bathroom. This is where all the magic happens, so come with me. We're gonna show you how it works. All right, inside you have a light switch, and of course you have the toilet. Kind of dummy proof, really. Got a little directions right here, but eh, I'll go over it. Okay, down on the foot pedal. Push halfway down, puts water in the bowl, all the way down, it all goes down. You do have a fantastic fan. I don't know why they call it fantastic. It's all manual. Crank it open. And of course, turn it on. Okay. Do recommend a vent cover to go over top so no rain or snow come in. You don't have to open or close it. All you gotta do is flip the switch on and off when you need the fan. And of course, it gives the walls willing to breathe during the off season so they don't start to warp or start to mold and mildew. All right, the shower. A little uncomfortable with all these people in here, so be patient with me, okay? Inside here you have two knobs on and off, super simple. Comes out the top, okay? Free skylight, unfortunately, no sunlight today. All right, most important, this guy right here. Make sure that clicks. You want glass to stay glass when you travel. Does have storage underneath. No toilet paper, unfortunately. Has a mirror for um, putting on your makeup, Mom. All your makeup could be in here, all right? Unfortunately, you don't need any because you're beautiful enough. All right, GFI receptacle. If you see this little tag right here, that means any outlet with that tag, you're going to reset it right here with this button. All right, we're going to turn some things off. And we're going to mosey on up to mom and dad's room. All right. What do we have? All the room you ever want. All right. Light switch on the wall. Air through the ceiling. And it is pre-wired for a second AC. That's what that tag is for. They are going to remove this vent. The wiring is in the roof. And of course, you can have a second AC in the bedroom if the one does not work enough for you. Now, the way it works, mom always packs the trailer, dad doesn't pack the trailer, so mom gets all this room for her clothes. Dad, you get the fire dresser over here in the corner. All right, that's how the government works. Deal with it. If you, if you behave, she might let you store some things under the bed as well. Does have lots of room for blankets, pillows, and of course, any additional chairs you choose to carry with you. All right, you do have a Smoke detector, carbon dioxide detector right here on the wall for your safety. And of course, a backer in the wall if you want to put a TV on with cable, antenna, or satellite feature. Okay. All right. What do you think? You're enjoying it? All right. Well, we're going to mosey on back into the kitchen area and we'll go over them options as well. All right, we are back into the kitchen area. As you can see, you have extra counter space. Make sure this is folded up before you close the slide room. But the simple fact is you don't want to relocate the slide room or the countertop. Super enough, just put it up. It locks into place. Okay, you got a little extra counter space. If you have to, lift it up. And of course, fold the legs back in and stow it down for travel. You do have a 110 outlet down here. And of course, you have the nice backsplash. Lots and lots and lots of storage, okay? Which is a good thing, why? You gotta have plates and silverware, right? So you put all the goodies in there, silverware and whatnot, and of course you do have silverware drawer. Okay, you have keys to the unit, and of course, all the manuals and paperwork. More storage, and of course, maybe the dog food tray can go in there. Standard size microwave, not big enough for turkey dinner, gotta go to mom's house for that. Okay, for the simple fact is the oven's not even big enough for a turkey dinner, only big enough for a Jack's pizza. But it is good for popcorn during movie night. Light and fan, and of course the stove. You can see that the glass top is down, that is for travel purposes and if you want extra counter space. It is glass just like the shower, so you make sure you recess both corners so it's flat. That way it stays glass. When you go to use the stove, knock it to the back, and of course you have a backsplash. As you can see a little bit better with the light on. Now, in this model, this is just the igniter. You can see the little flames there. 
That's all it's going to do is ignite. There's no gas portion there. You have to turn it on light by pushing it down onto the flame. And of course, you can light it that way. Oven is a tad bit different. All right, the oven you have to push down, hold, and of course use the igniter over here. Okay, long, long down, long ways down here, you can see that little flame down there. Once you see it, let go of the button, turn it to your designated temperature. Now myself and the cameraman, we like walnut chocolate chip cookies. So if you want to try that out, we'll be more than happy to sample it for you and give you a go around and see how well they taste. Underneath that, you have two important items. First is the LP detector. See the green light right there? Of course, that means it's safe to sleep in here. If that green light goes out for a reason, please do not sleep in here. If you acquire a gas leak in your travels and that's not working, that ends in bad news. Nobody likes bad news when they're camping, correct? Right, so make sure the green light's on all the time. If you want to test it, look at that. You know what it's going to make if you got a gas leak. It's going to go off one more time and it's going to go back to green. It's safe to sleep in here. Next to that is your main panel. All right, all your electrical is here. You can see AC, AC. So let's see what this one does. That's the main AC. Let's turn that one back on. So we're going to turn this one off since that's your second AC, which you don't have. Water, heater, all that stuff is labeled. This side is all your fuses. Now, there's no private investigator needed if you blow a fuse. Just make sure you have some extra 15 amp fuses because right to the right of that, you have a circuit board. If that fuse blows, a little, little red light will come on, pop the fuse out, put a new one in, the light goes out, and you're back up to camping. All right. We do have a pantry. Okay, the pantry, good news and bad news. Good news is you can put a lot of snacks in there. Bad news is Terry Town will not stock them. All right, the entertainment center. Cameraman, have a seat on the couch. All right, say, for instance, you're having a seat on the couch. Mom's over here making mixed drinks, right? Getting the old beverages, popcorn's going off in the microwave. You're gonna watch Bad Boys 2, okay? A lot of gunfire in that movie. For instance, nobody else wants to know what you're watching, okay? So make sure you turn zone two off. That'll turn the outdoor speakers off. And of course, you don't scare the neighborhood. It is AM, FM, Bluetooth, CD, DVD player, okay? Simple, simple enough functions, okay? You have A inside, B outside, aux cable, headphones, charge your phone off of it, or of course, Bluetooth to it, okay? TV comes with this unit, which is nice. It does come out, and it does rotate. Okay, so you can change it however you want if you're even at the kitchen table, all right, which is cool. Just make sure you put it back into place and lock it in. For travel, you want to make sure it stays a TV. You have storage below and on, on top, and of course, that is it. Now, we're going to pause the video and we're going to uh, get done with that portion. We'll be back shortly. All right, we're back. Uh, I have a few papers over here. I want to go over some things. We leave these in our coaches for our customers. It's regular maintenance. Thanks for full hookup, and we do definitely like Google reviews. Okay. On the back are options page. Not all options pertain to every coach, but some do. We did go over them. Backup camera, screens for your appliances, slide toppers, and, of course, awning cradle, vents for over the bathroom, surge protector. You don't need to lend a hand in this unit. Most important interior exterior and extended warranty now the way that works is you have a one-year manufacturer warranty with this unit or other units would be two year after that expires you can get our six-year service plan after that so you can be covered for six to seven maybe even eight years depending on the warranty from the manufacturer so the finance people will go over that portion with you you can ask them about it which is great because they know more about it the other two are the interior exterior because if you see over here on this number five it says wax camper twice a year you want to make sure the finish stays the way it is the day you buy it it's an investment so we do offer the ceramic based coating on the paint protection and of course the interior is fabric protection all right let me turn some lights off so i don't get rid of the glare for you i apologize for that 
Now, they're going to spray the awning first or slide toppers if you choose to go that route. If anything happens as fading, discoloring, or cracking on the fabric, they replace them free of charge, zero deductible. This is a one-time application. You don't have to bring it back and you're covered for five years. The outside, so in a nutshell, covers you these for these items as long as the, over here are the pictures. Now, what that means, if anything fades, they repaint. If the decals fade, peel, or crack, they will replace them free of charge, zero deductible. Okay? Inside, pretty much the same. It's all these options here. And of course, all the pictures. Now, everything in here is vinyl, or sorry, cloth, leather, or vinyl. They're going to spray with Scotch Guard. For the next five years, if anything, mold or mildews on, say, the curtain, balances, things like that for condensation in the wintertime, they will replace them free of charge. Now, if any stitching comes out or you tear or gouge the furniture less than six inches, they will fix it or replace it. If you spill dyes, crayons, bleaches, makeup, body fluids, pets included, as well as food stains, they will replace it as well, free of charge or deductible. If you're interested at any time of any of these options, please give us a call. We will go over them more in depth, but that is pretty much the rundown. So that's the, the finished portion in here. We're going to walk right outside with the camera ran real quick, and we're going to show you how to hook back up to the vehicle. Follow me, cameraman. So we're here, we're ready to hook up to the vehicle. So you want to go ahead and hit the power button, all right? And you're going to go through here and you're going to see if it has different options. Auto retract rear, okay? You push that button automatically, you are retracting the front, the rear jacks. That way you can go ahead and hook up to the vehicle once they're up. As you can see, it says retract your mirror jacks. Once that is done, of course, it'll say success. And of course, all you have to do is do auto retract and hit the rear button or the front button and the jacks will go up or down to hook up to the vehicle. Well, we hope you enjoyed your presentation. We'll see you soon. 